Hello and welcome to the Wooly Bee Podcast. This is episode 12 or 13, I don't remember, um, and today is April 16th, 2017. My name is Sarah, my username on Ravelry is MacAttack, and my username on Instagram is Mac08Attack. And today is Easter Sunday, so if you celebrate Happy Easter, um, I am just hanging out today. Um, but hopefully it was a lovely day um, for all of you out there. Um, it is a Sunday. It is a very warm summer-ish day here. Um, it's in the mid-80s, so the doors are closed. Hopefully it won't be too loud. Um, or hopefully new neighbors will do anything silly. But welcome! Thank you for coming and checking me out if you're new or returning if you are not. Um, and I hope you enjoy the show. So let's jump into the knitting. Um, there are some life things to talk about later. But let's jump into knitting because I have a finished object. So in my orange field bag, I finished my Denpa scarf wrap um, that I was sample knitting for the designer, Olga Bragavillian. And it is not blocked. She is going to be doing the blocking, which is fine with me. So here it is. So this is, it's going to be like way too large to actually show in its entirety. Well, so the ends are woven in there, not trimmed, because they'll get trimmed after blocking. Um, there you can see the colors. So this is kind of this oblong shape. It's not a parallelogram. It goes from narrow to wide um, as you knit, but it's the same general weavy pattern the whole time. And as you're doing it, you're switching through two gradient sets, going from light of one and darken the other all the way through. Um, and so here is what it looks like. So I used um, Miss Babs gradient sets. The orange is her Cygnus set and the gray is Karina. And I am really, really pleased with how this, this came out. And so I knit the narrow version. There is also a wide version um, that still only uses the two gradient sets. Um, this ended up using yardage wise about one and a half total gradient sets. It was about 1200 yards. Whereas the wide version, which is more of a wrap, uses pretty much the whole two sets. Um, so if you want some leftovers, do this size. And I think if we, Maybe attempt to stand up. You can kind of see how it's a nice, nice little scarf. This would go really nicely under a winter coat when that time returns. Uh, but so that is that. It was a fun knit. It was an easy knit. It was very easy. So it looks really, really hard. Um, but let me hold it up close. It is just a variation on traditional feather and fan. Um, and basically the only things you need to know to knit this are knit and purl, knit front and back, knit two together, and slip slip knit. So basic decreases, one kind of increase, knitting, purling, and the ability to count to eight, I think, which is easier said than done, but that's all you need and the ability to switch colors. And when you're actually working in a color block, like this one right here, we're using whatever these two colors are, you're carrying your yarn up the edge. So you're not cutting your yarn every time you, you stripe. You're only cutting it going from one section of two colors to the next. So there aren't that many ends to weave in, all things considered. Um, so yeah, it's a really easy knit. I definitely recommend it. Um, and it clearly looks a lot harder than it actually is. So there is, is Denpa. This will go in the mail to Olga tomorrow. She will block it and then we'll do whatever she wants to do with it. It's her sample to do with as she pleases. Um, but I definitely recommend that. It's a cool look. It's a lot of fun. Um, and you could definitely do this if you have one gradient set. Um, 
you could do one gradient and a matching solid, you could do two solids, gives you lots of fun options. So that is what I have for finished objects. I finished this this past week. So there it is. And in here are just the left trying not to get the reflection, the leftovers. So these are the Cygnus colorways. And which sounds a lot when I pronounce it um, like sickness. It's not. Sorry for the crinkles. Um, Cygnus. C Y G N U S. I just can't pronounce words clearly. Um, and then here are the leftovers from the Karina set. Obviously not in gradient order. So that is my finished object. Um, so next up we'll do works in progress. I started so two weeks ago back on April 1st. It was a Saturday. It was a beautiful spring day. And my motivation to do anything but knit was about zero. And I really, really felt the urge to cast on socks. That's what I wanted. It was warm. I'm a, I tend to do more socks in the summer because I think because they're smaller, I don't know, it's like a mental thing. Um, but I decided to cast on socks and pretty much everywhere was starting new cows, new knit alongs, new everything because it was the beginning of the month. So I jumped on board. Not in an official context, but I jumped on board. So hopefully the light in here is not great because I didn't turn any on. Um, hopefully you guys can actually see this. I started on April 1st the Clovis socks. Yeah, you can kind of see that. By Very Busy Monkey. Let me show you the side. You can kind of see they're kind of like pine cone scale things. I don't know. I like them. And then the front has these points that kind of look like hearts. Um, but this is the Clovis Point Socks by Very Busy Monkey. She is doing a, I believe it's a three month knit along that started on April 1st um, for a variety of her patterns and she lists them that she counts as texture. And so this will count for that. And um, so I started this on April 1st and I got about this far. And that satisfied my sock mojo. And then I felt guilty because I needed to get back to Denpa. Um, but I picked these back up when I finished, and it's actually going really, really fast. Um, I forgot how speedy socks can be. Um, so I am just about a row, round or two away from being done with the gusset. And then we'll cruise on down the foot, do sock number two. So I am knitting this out of Hazelnut's Artisan Sock in the Iris colorway. And that is sort of accurate, sort of not. Um, it's a really, really pretty, heathery, bluish purple. Um, so that's what I'm knitting it out of. This poor yarn, I think because it's so heathered, it's not speckled, um, but there's so much subtle variation to it that I had a really, really hard time trying to find a pattern for this. I've had this particular skein for four or five years now, and it's tried to become three or four different pairs of socks to no luck. And I think these are the ticket. Um, this pattern can handle a little bit more variation. It's clearly not showing up as I would like on camera. But hopefully I will get some Instagram photos after this is done recording because the light's pretty good outside. So you can see how pretty they are. So I'm enjoying this um, and I am knitting these on US size 2 double pointed needles. These happen to be Diet Craft wooden double points when they still made wooden double points. Um, they do not anymore, unfortunately, because their wood supplier burned down. So you cannot get these, but they're lovely. I have only one set, which makes me sad, but what are you going to do? So that's what I am knitting these out of and I am finding that I really should be knitting my thicker weight, thicker weight, sock yarn on size twos. 
Um, for a long time there, I was dropping down to 1.5s. So I have a set, a pair of artisan, or socks out of artisan sock on one and a half, and I mean those socks are going to last me forever because they are going to be, they're bulletproof. Um, but that was giving me a lot of hand pain and I was like, you really should just go back up to twos. All of your socks are on twos in the drawer and they've all held up fine aside from what would be expected. So go back to twos and it's amazing how much faster you can knit when your hands don't hurt. So, um, I've been enjoying these, needless to say, um, and having a good time. So that is living in one of my you so-and-so medium sized bags and the cute little alpacas or llamas, I don't know what So that is that. There's actually another skein in here, which is why it looks so plump. Skein of sock yarn that started a sock and needs to get restarted. So I have a second work in progress on the needles. Um, I began, because I couldn't decide what I wanted to cast on, after I finished Dempa, I decided that I should make something for my mom for her birthday. Her birthday is mid-May, so I've got, at this point, like a month. When I started this, it was like five weeks. Um, but I always like to give her something on her birthday, particularly because I've got yarn to make five or six different things for her. So this also helps to clear that up a little bit. So I began the Cane Shawl by D. O'Keefe. So I'm not that far into it, but here is what it looks like so far. And that is pretty darn accurate color-wise. But this is one of those asymmetrical triangle shawls um, where you start with just a few stitches and you're just going to consistently increase out into a triangle. Um, so this edge up here is my increase edge and this one along the side is not. Um, but it'll make a big giant right triangle. Kind of like a 30-60-90 triangle if you remember that from high school. I sort of, not really. But um, it's got this cool edge, so this kind of like bamboo pattern will go all the way down the whole shawl. And then as we build out into a bigger and bigger triangle, I'm going to have this sort of, hopefully my needles don't hit the computer, eyelet type pattern here. And so that will just continue outwards. Um, so it's a very simple shawl. It's mostly knit in pearl, which means that I screwed up the beginning a lot. Because you think you know what you're doing, and then you really don't because you don't have the pattern established. Don't get cocky, is basically what I'm saying. Um, but it's, it's a nice, easy knit. Um, I just hope I get into it and can power through. But I am getting this out of Neighborhood Fiber Company Studio DK in the Columbus Circle colorway. So here's the tag. And um, we got this at Maryland Sheep and Wool two years, two years ago, I think. Yeah, two years. So it was due to get knit. Um, and I think she's going to really love it. She did approve the pattern. She picked the yarn color, so she just doesn't fully know what's coming right now. But I am alternating two skeins. I have two skeins, because um, I will need the 550 yards. Uh, and I am alternating, because that's what one should do. Um, and I am knitting these on size 6 Chowgu circulars. So, oh, and that is living in a you so and so large bag in my bees. Love this. Um, but the yarn coordinates with it and I have not yet used this bag and I love it. So it's perfect, perfect size. The two balls of yarn here, the shawl will fill up the rest. Perfect. So let's jump into stash enhancements. I cross stitched about 10 stitches since the last time I recorded which is not enough to even dig it out from where I put it. So, stash enhancement. 
Um, back right about the time I recorded the last episode, Crafty was having, I think it was like a Mother's Day sale. I'm not really sure what the sale was, but it was a sale. And I was curious about their yarn. Um, and so I bought some. So the first thing I got um, was their, so their line of yarn is called Cloudborn. So I got the Cloudborn Fibers Limited Edition Alpaca Worsted in the Gray Heather colorway. And I have 11 of these. Um, the other 10 are in the bag in the other room, and I thought there was no reason to bring them. But this is the 11th, um, and I bought this to make, I think it's pronounced Dris, Dries, D-R-Y-S, wrap by Melanie Berg. Um, that is a giant stockinette wrap with some really pretty eyelets. And I was in love with it since it came out. The only catch with that is the original called for you to hold a strand of Wolf Oak Far, which is their worsted, with a strand of Wolf Oak Snow, um, which is their fingering. Which I felt with those two knit together is, and it's the most amazing thing ever. But even when I was getting my employee discount at Fiberspace, that was really, 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 really expensive. And just, it was never going to happen. So I decided that going off of my alpaca kit for my afton wrap, why don't I make it out of alpaca? It's not something that's going to need to hold a heavy block, so alpaca will be fine because alpaca doesn't hold a block very well, which is why it's often mixed with wool. So I thought this would be perfect, it'd be warm, it'd be squishy. Um, so I decided, so a lot of the cloud-borne lines have the same colors. Um, so you can get it in one weight and in another, and they'll presumably match. So I was going to do the worsted and then get the alpaca fingering in the same color and do it that way. And it was still going to be expensive, and this was like three bucks a ball or something awesome. And, I, and then I went back and I looked at the pattern, and if you look at it, it's huge. Like, it is massive. And I am not that big of a person. <laughs> So I decided that I would just use the worsted, and I will just drop down a couple needle sizes to make up for the um, lack of the fingering weight strand, and to give it still a nice dense fabric, because I think the original calls for you to knit the two strands together like a size 6 or 8, because it wants a really dense fabric. So I'll just drop this down to probably a 6. We'll see. I'll play with it, um, which will give me a smaller wrap and save me money. Um, but it's really lovely. I'm curious to see how this knits up, but I like it in the ball. I just wish they weren't 50 gram balls, but that's fine. So then I also got the Cloudborn Alpaca Wool Silk DK in the Silver Heather colorway. And this, you can see the shine on that in the sheen. Um, this is a blend of 45% alpaca, 25% merino, and 30% silk. And I got this to make the Caswell Bay hat out of the Take Heart book. So. Um, it's really, really soft and lovely. I do, or I would anticipate this, maybe you can see. This does have a fuzz factor to it. So I would not make this into a sweater, personally. But, shawls or hats? So I'm considering getting another color of this for a different hat. Um, it doesn't come in many colors, unfortunately, but it is really lovely. And yeah, I like it. So I got that. And then I had also, not very hard, but been looking for a skein of Madeline Tosh in Cosmic Wonder Dust. And Craftsy had some in stock in the Twist Light Base which I've never used, and so I picked up a skein of it. So this is Cosmic Wonder Dust, which is a natural base with a whole bunch of like rainbow speckles. And I got this to probably make the, I think it's pronounced Amalia, A-M-A-L-I-A -A -A socks. The pattern page is up on Ravelry, and the actual pattern should be released here in the next few days. But that's that, the speckly goodness. Um, so that is what I have for Sash Enhancement.
All right, so lastly, I wanted to just jump into the last few weeks in review. Um, so first up, thank you for kind of dealing with my technical difficulties. I recorded and then totally forgot about actually processing the file for like a week. And then when I finally processed it, YouTube was being cranky with me. I think it was because it wanted my computer to be restarted because it needed that. Um, and it wouldn't upload the file. And I kept trying, I kept trying. And it kept telling me that my connection wasn't strong enough. And I was like, well, that's silly because I can totally go get on Netflix right now without a problem. Um, and eventually I clicked on some like, are you having trouble? And YouTube told me what to do and it worked fine. So unfortunately the last episode got up two weeks after I recorded, um, which was not anticipated, but it happens, I guess. So hopefully this one doesn't take as long. Um, but in the meantime, my, let's see, the last time I recorded would have been right after my brother came, I think, maybe. This may be a review from last time, but my brother came overnight a couple weeks ago um, and then we got to see Brian Cranston speak here at UVA, which was really, really cool. I wasn't really sure what to expect and I thought he did a really, really lovely job of addressing the audience as people and it was, it was a lot of fun. So that happened and then the following weekend, or week, Friday, I guess, um, my aunt and uncle live outside Seattle, and they were heading over to Venice to do like a river cruise type situation. And oftentimes when they go traveling to Europe, they will stop over and visit us in Virginia for a day or two. And so they flew in that Thursday, they were staying with my parents, and they decided, because they had about a day and a half here, that they wanted to come down and see me. Um, so they came down that Friday, we got to hang out, we got dinner, um, and it was really lovely. And then the following Monday, so now we're two weeks ago, I decided to fight with gravity. And I lost because nobody beats gravity at anything. Gravity always wins. And I fell down a couple stairs and badly sprained my ankle. So I posted the day or so after it happened, the picture of it all wrapped up. That was right after I got x-rays. Um, so what happened was I was going down the stairs to do laundry, so I've got the whole laundry basket. And I totally thought I was on the, the bottom step before you like step down here on the ground. And I wasn't, I was two steps up. And so I put my foot out, and of course it's a lot farther down than I thought, and it just rolled right under me. Um, so I will spare you the actual foot, but there are various shades of dark purple and yellow at this point, now that it's been about two weeks. Um, I did break off part of one bone. Um, this is my good foot, but I broke it off down here. Um, this is all sprained. This is all purple and yellow. And then there's a very good chance I broke another thing up here. Um, yeah. I couldn't put weight on it, and of course, so now we're at the bottom of the steps. There are three, like, half flights of steps out down to get outside of my apartment, and I've got a whole thing of laundry, and I can't walk. So I somehow got everything up the stairs, and I realized that something was wrong. It was more than just a typical sprained ankle or rolled ankle or whatever, because I've done that a million times. And um, I had a friend who was free and who could take me to student health and then take me over to the hospital to get x-rays. And um, so that was super fun when I couldn't really go anywhere. And then my mom came down, she came down two separate times for about a day and a half each, just to help out. So she did a lot of the dishes, she got that laundry done that needed to get washed, um, made a lot of food, or went out and got a lot of food, we ate a lot of pizza, it was awesome. Um, just to kind of help out because I was at a point where I could not move much this couch was my home, and the way that student health left me was with just an ace bandage and crutches. And they said, you know, if, if anything is broken, we'll refer, refer you to orthopedics, and they can figure out what to do, um, but that's all that we can do. So it meant that I was about a week and a half without any kind of protection on it. 
just aside from an ease bandage. Um, and I, by the end of that week and a half, could put, so about this time last week, I could put some weight on it, not much, but some. Went to orthopedics one Tuesday, and they gave me this snazzy new fashion accessory. So, um, I am stuck with that for the next six to eight weeks, um, but it has drastically helped my mobility and drastically helped the healing, even though it's hot and it's heavy. Um, but I'm in a lot less pain than I was even a week ago, which is good, because I was in a lot of pain. I was down in ibuprofen like it was candy. Um, I was following directions, I wasn't like taking too much, but it was, like right on cue I was taking as much as I could and it just wasn't touching it. And um, but now I'm at the point where I don't really need it. So that's really good. We're healing, but I would recommend not falling down the steps because it doesn't end well. So that's kind of the biggest thing that's happened lately. Aside from, now let's see. I don't remember when I recorded in reference to this. I think we had an idea, but we weren't sure. Is I got a job. So I am going to for certain be a high school geosystems teacher come next fall. I will still be completing my degree requirements, my student teacher requirements, but I will be a full-fledged teacher, um, which is so exciting. It's I finally kind of feel that there was a point to all of this and there's a clear, clear end goal in sight, which I really enjoy. So I will be teaching in the fall while fulfilling student teaching requirements, which is mostly going to a seminar class once a week and doing some video recordings of lessons and whatnot. I will graduate in December with my master's and I will show up in January right after the new year. Like nothing has ever changed except now I have a master's degree. I get a little bit more money on my salary and keep doing what I'm doing. Um, so that's really nice that I don't have to then try to find a job come January. Um, I'm so excited. It's going to be awesome, I hope. Hopefully. Um, but we don't have it nailed down for certain what I will be teaching in terms of um, level, but it looks like I'll be teaching two honors classes and three ESOL, um, English language learner classes. Um, and my kids are all going to be primarily juniors and seniors in high school. So it's, it's going to be tough, but I'm excited. There's a clear purpose to everything. So that was just over the moon exciting to get that nailed down for certain. And so that happened and then like a week later, I've now got a broken foot. So it's like one extreme emotion to the other. Um, but I'm just... I can't even describe how excited I am to have that in the books, have it on paper. Um, so this summer I will be, once I'm home for the summer, I'm finding an apartment, moving into that apartment, and becoming a real adult. Like a real adult. None of this fake adult business that I've been pulling for the last how many, many years. Uh, but I'm ready to kind of spread those wings. I think I'm ready. We'll see. But that's kind of where the future whole future lies. Um, but until next time, I hope you guys have had a lovely Easter. Um, please go over and check out our Ravelry group. I have been very neglectful of it lately. But please go check it out. Post questions, post comments, share your projects. Um, please go over and subscribe on YouTube. That way you can get updates when I actually do get around to releasing my very sporadic videos. Um, and I hope you guys keep moving and stitching away. Um, I hope you're gearing up for Stash Dash. If you don't watch The Knit Girls, you should. They were one of the first podcasts that I've watched, and I've watched them straight through for five plus years now. Um, but they do a big Stash Dash Knit All the Things every summer. It'll start probably in about a month. I don't think they've released the start date, but usually sometime late May is when it starts, and it wraps up in August. Um, and all the rules will be posted over in their group, but I participate that in that. I have never actually completed it. But every and every year I say this is the year. 
Probably not, but we'll see. Uh, but I'm gearing up for that, so I hope you guys will join me. Maybe we'll make a thread or something to kind of post what we're working on. Uh, maybe they'll be in a long, probably not. But until then, uh, just keep being active, post things, subscribe, um, and enjoy springtime, I guess is all I have to say. Thank you so much for watching. Um, I hope you're knitting all the things, and I hope you will come back next time. Thanks. Bye, guys.